Um, okay, I think we'll wait for two minutes and see if um, more people join and then we'll get started. Okay, I think we'll get started now. Um, welcome back to week six of the Python programming class. Today, um, the first thing on our agenda is going over the homework. And then we're going to do some review um, of what we did last week. And then we're going to join a Google Classroom and um, that has to do with um, your project. So today you guys are going to start your projects and you'll be submitting it through Google Classroom. And um, we'll also give you guys some work time to get started and answer any questions that you guys have. Same Zoom etiquette as every week. Um, you guys know the drill. Okay, so we'll go over homework. I'll get that set up. And while I'm doing that, also make sure to pull up um, your homework as well. Okay. Okay, hopefully you guys can see my screen. Okay, so um, for last week's homework, um, the first problem was to create a vehicle class with max speed and mileage instant attributes. So um, I'll just go over this because um, I want to give you guys more time for your project. So the first thing you would do is define the class and you use the keyword class. So it says to create a vehicle class. So you say class vehicle colon, and then it says with max speed and mileage instant attributes. So with this, you would basically want to create an init um, function inside the class, which if you guys remember, that's a built-in function. And you use the self parameter to create those instant vari instance variables. And um, in this case, it's max speed and mileage. So you put that as the parameters and you just set those as speed is equal to max speed and self.mileage is equal to mileage. And here are just some te test cases to make sure that um, your class is able to, um, if your class has those in instance attributes or not. Okay, number two, create a vehicle class without any variables and methods. 
So um, this one might have been tricky because if you remember on the slides, we said that whenever you want to create a class, you can never keep um, leave it empty without getting an error. So if you want to create an empty class, you always have to use the pass um, keyword. OK, number three, create a class. Create, create a child class bus that will inherit all the variables and methods of the vehicle class. Then create a bus object that will inherit all the variables and methods of the vehicle class and display it. So you're given the parent class, which is um, vehicle, and they have the init function um, and some instant attributes like name, max speed, and mileage. And your expected output is like that. So you'd have to create a test case for it as well. So first, um, you would copy paste um, what is given. So that's, again, the parent class, which is a vehicle class. And um, if you remember when you're creating a child class and you want it to inherit any methods um, from uh, the parent class, you would do class and then the child class and then in parentheses, the parent class. And in this case, um, the child class um, doesn't have any of its own methods or variables. So we would just pass since it's already inheriting everything from um, vehicle. And then you would, um, for this specific expected output, this would be the test case. Okay. Number four, create a bus class that inherits from the vehicle class. Um, give the capacity arrangement of bus dot seating capacity as a default value of 50. Hint, you might need to use method overwriting. Okay. So our parent class again is vehicle and we have the um, child class as bus. So we're given um, the, um, we're given the init function for the vehicle class and we're also given the seating capacity um, function. And so basically what you're gonna do is, um, because when you have a child class and it inherits all the methods from the parent class, which in this case is bus, if you want it to override um, the method, which in this case is seating capacity, you would have to define seating capacity again and then change whatever you need to change. So in this case, we wanted the default value of 50. So we said um, under class bus, which inherits from vehicle, definition of seating capacity is self comma capacity is equal to 50. And if you put, um, if you put a value in the parameters and you set it equal, that means that that's the default value. And then we would just return super dot seating capacity, capacity is equal to 50. That makes sense. And then we just print it out um, according to the output. Does anybody have any questions? Nope, okay. Then we'll go back to the slides and we'll get started on projects. Okay, so we finished homework answers. Okay, so um, we'll go over review from um, last week and then we'll get started. Okay, so review, um, we did classes last week like um, what we showed in the homework and a class is an object constructor or a blueprint for creating objects. And whenever you're defining a class, you would always use the class keyword. And all classes have a function called init um, which is always executed when the class is being initiated and use the init function to assign values to object properties or other operations that are necessary, necessary to do when the object is being created. The init function um, initializes parameters with the values passed as arguments, again, same for any other function, and the parameters can be accessed in other methods of the class and also with object reference. Okay, and then we also went over objects. Objects can also contain methods. Methods and objects are functions that belong to the object. And we also have the self parameter um, that's used to access variables that belong to that specific class. And it has to be the first parameter of any function of the class and it can have any name. Um, the pass statement, again, if you don't want um, 
to get an error, but you want to keep your class um, empty, then you use the past statement. Um, yeah, so if you have no content um, and you want to avoid getting an error. Um, inheritance was the last thing that we went over. Inheritance um, allows us to define a class that inherits all the methods and properties from another class. And um, this is when you have a parent class or the class that you want to inherit from. And any class can be a parent class and um, it's the same syntax as creating any class. And the child class is the class that inherits from that parent class. And um, to create a class that inherits um, from another class, you send that parent um, name as a parameter inside um, the definition for the child class. Um, if you add a method in the child class with the same name as a function in the parent class, then you would be overriding that method that's in the parent function. Okay, so that was just like a quick review of last week. And um, we're gonna go on to starting the project. So um, if you guys could go to Google Classroom and um, join this, um, using this code. Um, there's a classroom already set up for you guys. Um, I'll try and see if I can like freeze my sharing. I don't think I can, but let's see. And then once you guys are done um, joining the class, just tell me in the chat, um, just say done when you're done. And everybody should be joining this class um, if you want to be able to turn in your projects at the end. Again, once you're done, just tell me in the chat. We just need four more people. Okay, I see four people in the Google Classroom, but I only see two people who said that they were done. Awesome. Still waiting on two more people. So as soon as you guys join the class, we can get started. Still waiting on two people. Okay, awesome. All right, so. This is the project introduction. I'll put the link to the pro pro, um, project specifications um, once we finish going over this slide. So 
Basically, you're going to write a Python program that allows the user to play a game of Hangman. So um, use your knowledge of variables, flow control, and lists in Python to store and manipulate information. Um, you should first come up with an outline of how you want to organize your code. And you have to test your program to meet the program's um, project specifications. Um, the project will be graded using the rubric provided in the document, which again, I'll send, I'll send in the chat. Um, and you're also going to be assessed on using standard coding conventions, like using comments to document your code. And this is especially important if, um, let's say, um, if some of you guys decide to pursue um, computer science in the future, um, other people who don't understand programming may want to look at your code and they need to be able to understand it. And you can do that by using comments. So try to use comments wherever you can. Um, and yeah, feel free to ask for help on Google Classroom or during class, or you can also email us. And I'll send um, the link to this document um, in the chat and everybody should um, open it and make a copy. And in Google Classroom, if you see there's an assignment and in the description, it says that you have to make a copy and then change the title to um, your first name, last name, and then project specifications. So I'll send the document in the chat. And then I'll also show you guys like just a run through of how the code should look. Okay, so this is a link to the project um, specifications. Open this document too. So if you guys, um, here, let me screen share. You got it. So if you scroll down to where it says grading rubric, you can see um, basically how we're going to divide um, the points. And so you can go through, read it. And also there is a bonus section. So like you guys will have like around, I think, two weeks to finish this project, which is probably more than enough time. And so if you have time or like if you want to like if you're just bored, then you can try um, doing the bonus um, part, which is basically um, printing out the letters that have already been used, or you can display, um, or like if you if the user types help, they would print out all the letters that they already guessed. So that's a bonus. And I will um, show you guys a test run of this code. Okay, so if I run this, Maybe slow. Uh. Okay, so you guys can see the first thing that's printed out is Let's Play Hangman. Um, and then it gives you instructions on how to play. So number one, you can only guess one letter at a time. You can guess the answer by entering guess answer. And if you ha if you guess wrong, then you lose a life. And um, that's wrong, but you actually have 10 lives right now. Okay, so, um, and then it says good luck. And then it says guess the characters. And it prints out five underscores in, um, on a new line each time. So, and then it'll say, guess the character, and then it'll ask for user input. So let's say I guess A, and then I click enter. It would say either letter found if it was in the word, or in this case, it would say letter not found, and it would deduct one from the number of lives. And um, again, it would print out the underscores again, and then guess another character. So letter not found, let's see if I can guess a character until it's found. Okay, so I guess E and um, it was correct. So it replaces that specific um, letter with the underscore that it corresponds with, okay? And then let's see. So right now I have six lives left. And then, so when I guess the correct letter, if you remember, it doesn't deduct a point. 
only until I guess another wrong letter will it deduct, um, or not a point, a live. Okay. Uh, let's see. So there's another fourth one. Okay, and then so at the end, when you run out of lives or after you guess the answer correctly, then it will either say out of lives, game over, or you won, or something um, along those lines. And it'll also print out the word and it'll ask you to play again. So if you want to play again, then you say yes. And if you don't want to play again, then you say no. And I'll show you the no version. So if you don't want to play again, you say no. And then it would say thank you for playing. And it would quit the program. So um, that might be a little harder. So if you guys have any trouble with that, just like let us know and we can walk you through it. Um, and yeah, does anybody have any questions? You can just unmute or you can ask in the chat. Nope. Okay. So I will stop sharing and um, you guys should get started on your projects. And if you guys have any questions at all, please let us know. Um, it'll just make the process easier for you guys and less stressful. So yeah, just you can unmute. Um, we'll be stay on the call until four and yeah, work on your projects. Also, one thing I forgot to mention before, um, right now, um, turn in um, the link to your REPL of where you're gonna be um, putting your code so that we can see like your progress. And then um, we won't grade it until 
next next week. So just right now, just turn in the link um, that you're using for your REPL. And if you guys have any questions on how to do that, I can show you that as well. Should I name my file again? Hold on, it's in the description. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, so you're gonna name, um, you can name your file first name, last name, colon, um, hangman project. I'll put that in the description as well. For your REPL um, project. Awesome, yeah. So just turn in again, turn in um, the link to your ruffle. Okay, so I think um, you guys are having trouble. Okay, so Mehik, I can see a REPL, but actually what I meant by the REPL link is actually if you go to, um, let's say, a screen share. So everybody should pay attention right now also. So if you want to share your REPL um, link, basically you just, you click this invite button actually. If you see this invite button over here on the right corner, top right corner, you click that and then you say generate a join link and then you would copy that link. So do that for your project and then just turn it in um, into the Google Classroom. Awesome. Everybody else, yeah, thank you, Rithik. If everybody else could also um, send their links in, that'd be awesome. So only two people have sent their links in. So everybody else send your links in as soon as possible.
Um, I have a question. Yeah. Like approximately how many lines of code would it be just so that I don't overthink it? Um, let me open it up for one second. Okay, so mine is around 60 lines of code. If you can probably give or take like 20 lines. So don't worry about it too much. Okay. And remember to read um, the grading rubric because it gives you hints on um, what kind of stuff we're looking for.
Yes. Um. So, like, how do you specify like a position in a list in Python? Um. Are you talking about if you know the index? No, it's, it's in, yeah. What? It's just like I'm creating a function to uh, figure out the length of words, it, words in the list that I've created. Mm -hmm. So, like, how do I specify um, each position in the function? Um, if what you're trying to look for is the length of each word then you don't need um a function does that make sense you need um do you remember the len function that's a built-in function that you can use yeah like, so how do i say like len position you would say um like len like if you have word list position zero and it should return like um, five for a tiger. Does that make sense? Is that what you're asking? Yes, yeah, so does that mean I have to do that for every single position? Um, one, zero, one list one, one list two, one list okay, two. Okay, I'll give you a hint. So. When you're doing the hangman, um, your each game is only one word, right? And you're trying to guess the letters. So yeah. you have a list of words right now. So what you can do is you can create a random generator that will generate like a random word from the list. So you don't need to worry about like getting the length of each word, just whatever word it picks, you can just get the length of that. Okay. okay. Sounds I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so you said earlier when you were talking to other students that we had to choose a list of random. We had to make a list of random words, and that random word would be the one that we would like use for the person to play hangman with. How would I yeah. choose that random word in the list? Um. So there's um. Do you remember the random module that we went over? If you import that module, the random um, oh, right. module, there's a thing called, um, let's see if I can find it, random.choice. You okay. use that function. Thank you. Yeah.
question. Yes. Um, so I'm using the random choice um, function to pick a random position from my list, the list that I've created. However, yeah. however, when I type it into the uh, REPL, it just it just says that um, random isn't defined. Yeah, so um, I wrote as a comment on, as well on your um, in your REPL, but when you're using the random um, function, because it's not um, a pre like it's not like the len function, which is already a built in function, you would have to import that module and that module is a random module. So if you remember at the beginning of our code, we would um, say import random and then you can use random. Also, one thing about um, your code is that you're saying random.choice word list, but your word list is after um, random.choice. So right now, the computer is saying, I don't know what word list is, and then it's just going to stop. Um, um, it's it's going to stop running the program once it gets that error. So it's not going to okay. understand that word list is, or, so you have to define it before. Yeah. OK, thank you. Okay, so it is 355. So um, we are going to end now. Um, yeah, thank you guys for coming. Um, your homework for this week is, and next week is to work on your projects and um, have a great week. Remember there's class next um, Sunday and it'll just be full work time for your projects and any questions that you guys have. And yeah, email us if you guys have any questions. Thank you guys for coming. Uh -huh. Um, Shivani, do you have any questions? Shivani.
Um, Shivani, did you have a question?
Okay, so I'm not sure um, if you guys are waiting for the ML instructor. Um, I don't know if he's going to join a little later, but I will end this meeting. Um, just rejoin the meeting, and then when he comes, he'll just um, start the meeting again.